assisting all types of businesses, ranging from aged care, community care and disability industries, to the building, construction, mining industries, and also tertiary institutions. Our mission is to assist and support these businesses to comply with the workplace health and safety legislation in Australia. On a day-to-day -day basis, I get to run training programs, undertake workplace inspections and risk assessments, and assist with development, implementation, audit and review of safe systems of work within business. I love it. <laughs> I know everyone's going, oh geez, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I get to meet a wide variety of people and do what I'm passionate about all at the same time. What I hope to gain from this GSE trip is to view how another country supports safety in the workplace and to build networks and share information to allow me to develop my skills and my business further. I was born and raised in the country on a property east of Inverell. My mum and dad still reside on the family property. My husband Damien, who works for the same company as our team Sparky, and I live on a small block of land 3.8 miles south of Inverell. We live there with six horses, three cats and two dogs. I'm the youngest of twins and my twin brother is a flight sergeant in the Royal Australian Air Force. My interests include anything equine, ranging from attending horsemanship clinics and playing polo cross, better known as poor man's polo and best described as lacrosse on horseback. <coughs> I also enjoy basketball, reading, catching up with family and friends, meeting new people and experiencing new things. What I love about Australia is its people, culture and lifestyle. We are a multicultural country and we're proud of it. The original inhabitants of Australia are the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. More than 6.5 million migrants have settled in Australia since 1945. Today, Australia has a population of more than 21 million people. More than 43% of Australians were born overseas or have a parent that was. And our Indigenous population is estimated at 2.3%. More than 75% of Australians live a cosmopolitan lifestyle in urban centres, mainly in the capital cities along the coast. An important part of the Australian culture and lifestyle is our public holidays. Most Australians will have around 12 national and state public holidays a year, including Christmas Day, New Year's Day, Australia Day, Anzac Day and Easter. Australia has one of the most diverse cuisines in the world that has no national dish. We'll eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> From traditional bush tucker of kangaroo, crocodile and emu, to Aussie favourites of meat pies, Lamingtons, Pavlovas and Vegemite <laughs> and mix it all in with the flavours and tastes of Italian, Chinese, Japanese, French, Moroccan and Lebanese foods just to name a few. Australians will have a go at anything once, even with chili grubs. I will now hand over to our team Sparky Jack. Hi there. My name is Jack Woods and I live in the beautiful coastal town of Fossa Tunkari, which is the southeasternmost point of District 9650. Fossa has a population of 18,300 and stands about 20 feet above sea level. Fossa is known for its beautiful white sand beaches, beautiful lakes and temperate climate with the air temperature ranging from 39 to 96 degrees Fahrenheit. The main industry in Fossa is tourism, fishing and oyster farming and due to its huge area of sand, shallow sand bottom lakes, that's really hard to say, <laughs> boasts the best oysters in the world. O oysters take about five years to produce a plate sized oyster, which is about equivalent to the size of a quarter. The club that I'm being sponsored by is the Rotary Club of Tunkari Foster, with the current president being Bruce Parsons. There are three clubs in Foster Tunkari, with my club being the oldest being chartered on the 17th of December 1956 and still having a foundation member. Tunkari Foster is heavily involved in youth programs including Ryla, Ryder, Rotary Youth Exchange and obviously the GSE with them having two running GSE team members 
Brendan Guiney, having just returned from Canada, and now me, travelling to beautiful South Florida. I work for a company called Essential Energy as a leading hand electrical linesman. I've been in the industry for almost seven years, and in that time I've completed a trade and half of a diploma in the electrical supply industry. In my role, I can be responsible of up to, for up to 40 people in coordinating planned maintenance, force maintenance, being emergency work, and upgrades to the electrical network in my area. A typical day can be very non-typical, as it can start any time of the day or night. Being on call, I'm expected to be available 24-7, and if the power goes out, we go out, no matter the weather or the time. The electrical industry is a heavy industry, with truck mounted cranes, elevated work platform, capstan and winch trucks, line trucks, four wheel drives and boats all needing to be capable of getting anywhere there are power lines. Out of the GSC, I hope to develop work practices and safety within the workplace and also a famous saying is the variety of the spice of life. This being said, I plan to throw myself into anything and everything and get the most out of this opportunity. My family consists of me. <laughs> That's it. Um, my 11 year old puppy Shelby and my new six month old puppy Sooty. Also surrounding me are my parents Alan and Karen, my little brother Digby, my sister and brother in law Nerida and Miguel, and my six month old baby niece Alira. I also have a beautiful girlfriend Claire who is studying in Sydney and we've been together for over four years. Now let me tell you, I am quite the sportsman. <laughs> I've played and coached volleyball on a national level, and next year I'll be playing for the Dolphins. Tiny. <laughs> 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 no, really. Probably too good. No, really. The Foster, Tom Curry, Dolphins rugby union team. <laughs> I also enjoy travelling, fall driving, reading, and just getting up to a little bit of mischief with my mates. Now what I love about Australia is our language and our sport. And when you put them together, she's just ripper. Um, that means it's really good. <laughs> and in Australia, the blokes? That's the men. They play rugby league, rugby union, cricket and soccer. That's games with balls. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> and the Sheilas? That's the women. On the other hand, they play netball, hockey and volleyball. That's um, more games with balls. <laughs> the most fun in sport is barracking for your team. Um, that's kind of cheering for them. Shit, have a go, you mum. Um, try your hardest. <laughs> Especially when the buffets get in and have a bit of a biffo. That's we when, love a blue. That's when the players decide to have an argument and use their fists. We kind of like a fight in a game. <laughs> <laughs> and we always got to tell the ref he's a bloody galah. He's not the brightest person on the field. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's about sitting down with your mates and having a few quiet studies. That's having a few drinks with your friends. Now, over to our kindergarten. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle Cameron and I'm from Gyra, a small town in northern New South Wales. Gyra has a population of approximately 2,200 people, so not a very big town. And being on top of the Great Dividing Range, we have an elevation of 4,363 feet above sea level, which is why we can boast the highest caravan or trailer park in Australia. The name Gaira is said to originate from the language of the <coughs> people, meaning white cockatoo or fishing place. Gaira is a relatively small town, but there are a range of things to do and see. We have the Mother of Ducks Lagoon, which incorporates the golf course and is a great spot for bird watching. There are a range of sporting teams and places to fish and bushwalk. Some of the major events in the town include the Lamb and Potato Festival and the Gaira Show and the Rotary Christmas Parade. The traditional industries of, growing, of wool growing, fat land production, beef production and pota potato crops are strong enterprises in Gaira. <coughs> Our newest industry has come in the form of tomatoes or tomatoes. Blush tomatoes are housed in almost 50 acres of glass houses and currently produce more than five and a half million pounds of tomatoes each year. They are said to be the largest glass houses in the southern hemisphere. The Gara Rotary Club was chartered in 1946. It meets each Wednesday night at 6.30pm and is only a small club with about 18 members. Our current president is Martha Widerman and our major project for this year is to establish a walking track around Gara. They also run the town's annual Christmas carnival. 
I'm a kindergarten teacher at Gara Central School, and a central school in Australia goes from kindergarten, which is our first year of school, through to year 12, which is our last year of school. Our school is a public school, and that means that it's funded by the state. I'm in the unique position of being part of a team teaching approach, where there are two teachers on our kindergarten class of 32 at all times. A typical day, if you can ever have one in a kindergarten class, begins with English in the morning session, which I teach, Maths in the middle session, which my teaching partner teaches, and then one of the other key learning areas such as science, maths, or uh, science, art, or music in the afternoon. As well as my classroom responsibilities, I also coordinate our fun run and our biannual musical. I direct that. Whilst on vocational visits, um, I've already been to one school and saw the craziness of Halloween, which is good. Um, I'm also looking forward to meeting the staff and students and seeing the programs that are run within the schools. And I'm hoping to get some great ideas that I can take back and share with my class and my colleagues in Australia. This is my home in Gyra, where I live with my eight-year-old dog, Tessa. She's a border collie. I grew up on my parents' property, which is about 22 miles west of Gyra. They still live there on 1,400 acres, where they grow fine merino wool sheep. The property has been in our family for the most part, since it was settled by my great-great-grandfather, who came out from Scotland. I have two brothers, one older, one younger, who are both married with children and live in Gyra. And I love spending time with my family and spoiling my niece and nephews. As well as spending time with my family and friends, I enjoy reading, movies and music. I play netball in the winter and touch football in the summer. I also love a range of crafts, with some of my more recent projects being the quilts shown on the screen. And what I love about Australia. I love the way Australia is so unique in so many ways. And when we do something, we tend to do it in a big way. For example, the mm. unique way we apparently get around. <laughs> the rock in the backyard. <laughs> the big aquarium off the east coast. <laughs> the fence to keep the neighbours' dogs out. The coat hanger. And if you look around our district, there are a range of big things, from a big sheep in my hometown, to a giant banana, a golden guitar, and everything else in between. <laughs> and Rotary is a big part of this as well, advertising Polyta Plus in a big way. And that's it, folks. So, thank you for being Thank you very much for having us. We've really enjoyed it. We're enjoying our time and we're looking forward to the next three weeks. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. You could have gone to the United States. I guess you picked South Florida visit. And is that right? Was South there... Florida picked us, I think. Oh, uh, <laughs> maybe you know I was so wondering right. how it was that you picked us. We're delighted that you did. The two, um, the two governors, your, your, your district governor, Todd, and our district governor, Barry, did meet at the um, convention that when yeah, all, the, when all the district governors get together. Um, and your governor had decided that this year he definitely wanted um, English speaking. We, we do speak English. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so English speaking GSC team. So they got together and sort of said, yep, that sounds great. So, yeah, because it's kind of decided then. Our good fortune. Yeah. Yeah. And as yeah. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm.